Carlo, I like to talk about the philosophy of physics, the philosophy of, of cosmology, in order to see the broader implications of the scientific theory, if you can. I mean, to be very honest, employ critical thinking, the kinds of things that are really the most sophisticated philosophy applying to the science. Uh, uh, in, in the context of trying to understand the further implications of physics and cosmology, you've written uh, what I think is an important book because it, uh, it, it introduces uh, seven what you call brief lessons in physics to very wide populations. Maybe it's simple, but um, I, I want to ref reflect for me w w the importance of communicating the essence of physics to large audiences. Uh, first of all, I think there are large audiences that are interested in modern science, definitely. And uh, my book, I was surprised by, by so many people being interest, uh, interested in it. Uh, it means that people want to know, um, and people want to know what is happening in, in, in modern science, you know, quantum gravity, cosmology, particle physics, quantum mechanics, general relativity, um, but also want to know the implications yeah. of that. And uh, what I did in my book was, to, it's a very small book, is to just focus not on the details, but on the core uh, discovery within each discipline. And I think this is what uh, it's interesting for many people, but also I, I, I think that's what uh, um, is more meaningful and significant is in the science that, that we do. A conference like uh, uh, the conference here, uh, it's not a technical conference about adding details to some mm. information about physics. It's trying to go to the deep questions, to the core uh, questions. What do we know about reality? What do we don't know about uh, time? What do we know about the observable or what we know? And uh, um, I think that the uh, separate the, the distance between physics and philosophy is small. It's very small. Physics uh, nourish itself from philosophy. The best philosophy uh, find nurture in, in physics. Why? Because our understanding of the world is one. It's not broken in pieces. We don't have a physics, uh, a, a, a philosophical, or religious. We are just unitary beings which try to bring together a vision of the world based on everything we know. Um, the last chapter of my book, I talk about ourselves, uh, human beings, uh, as we can think about ourselves in this physical world. What are we, human beings, in the physical world? And I think uh, we need, or at least I need, a perspective on the, on the world which is consistent with our best physics, uh, but it's also consistent with the fact that I have feelings, I have emotions, I have uh, uh, I think of myself as an entity viewing the world, uh, and uh, we want an overall bringing together uh, of that. Give me a sense, very quickly, of each of the seven, and explain why that is an important extension or an implication of physics. Because physics can have has thousands of different ideas and proofs and equations and things, and you've picked seven ideas. So, what are the seven? And why do they I express fundamentally the philosophy of physics? Um, the first chapter is on general relativity, because it has changed in depth what we mean about space and time. And that's basic. And the structure of the whole universe. Exactly. So. Got it. The second is about quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics has changed, has changed, and is still changing in depth what we think about matter. Matter is different than what we thought before. So it's, 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 it's the second And it's the fundamental basis for everything that exists, obviously. Exactly, exactly. So, but, you know, quantum mechanics tell us that the world is not made by stones, <laughs> by things. Yeah. So, so, it's a, so it's a new world. It's a total, so both of the first two are different ways of thinking about things that we thought were, were, were obvious and, and, and self-evident. Exactly, neither, exactly, neither. exactly. Neither. Um, third about cosmology. Uh, we, it's, it's, it's basically a chapter with pictures. Uh, we saw the world, you know, s uh, the ground and the sky, and then the earth and, and the sky, and the earth going around the sun, and then the galaxy, and then uh. and thousands of galaxies, and there are all, all this, and then the, 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 the story. So, so, so this immense expansion. The of scope the, of reality. Scope of reality. Okay. And the smallness of ourself in the universe we see. The universe is incredibly large, like a hundred 
a see, see, billion I, 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 and more I, I, galaxies. I'm with you till, till this one because I just I kind of disagree with the smallness of ourselves because I see ourselves in a very big way because we understand and we can comprehend all of that. And to me, it's an incredible thing that with with a few thousand years of recorded history and a few hundred years of decent science, we are able to understand the structure of the universe, the, the back to the time 10 to the minus 39th or whatever seconds that we can get to now, maybe you say even, even earlier. I mean, that to me is incredible. So that makes us, in one sense, very big in terms of the universe. Um, importance is in the eyes of the beholder, <laughs> right? So for every mother, uh, her children are the most important thing of the world. Even more, for every little child, his mother is the yeah. most okay. important thing right. of the world. I just want to put my two cents in. Yeah, no, no, but I agree <laughs> with you. So for ourselves, uh, we are the most important. Plus, we are uh, full of knowledge, we're beautiful, we are nice, we are all this stuff. Yeah. No, I'm making a, even a stronger point. I'm saying not we're just not good for ourselves. I'm saying that by understanding the universe, we, we, we are a bigger part of the universe than it would look like because we're on this one Earth, this one system, in the, out, in the outskirts of one galaxy out of a hundred billion, you know, et cetera, et cetera, But we have no idea whether there are other parts of the universe that understand no, the universe. Well, maybe, maybe there are, maybe there yeah. aren't. Okay, right. so it's another, no, no. another question. <laughs> all right, let, let's go on. So. Um, then there's one chapter uh, about uh, um, uh, quantum gravity. Okay. So bringing, uh, bringing. So uh, this is basically a frontier way of thinking about uh, about the structure exactly. of everything. Exactly. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm skipping one. First is one about quantum field theory. Oh, okay. Because quantum field theory, par particles, particle physics. That's I mean, quantum field theory is often presented in the form, you know, there are these particles, these particles, yeah, and these yeah, fields, like, but like not, that's not the right. in a right. zoo. That's right. not the interesting part. That's right. a list of things. I think the interesting part is that particles are not really particles. I think that exist, don't exist, exist, don't exist. The vacuum is full of stuff. Uh, so there is this uh, sort of vibration. The universe is like the the universe, the hippies in the 60s, right? It's all vibrations, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. So again, uh, it's sort of relativistic quantum mechanics, but it has changed our sense of what is stuff. Okay, yeah. And up to now, it's mostly established physics. Then I go to quantum gravity. Which is, you know, I say clearly, this is a boundary. Mm -hmm. Now I tell you what we're trying mm -hmm. to do. And I talk about quantum gravity, quantum granular space. I talk about loop quantum gravity, the structure of space and time, the quantum structure of space and time. Then there's one chapter about uh, heat and the relation between heat and time. Heat and time and gravity. You know, gravity changes time, changes the meaning of heat, black hole, mm -hmm. uh, all that. And these are six lectures. And there's the last lecture which is not about physics really, but is about what are we in this funny world, this f the world of uh, jumping particles, curved <laughs> space, <laughs> immense universe. What is human beings that feel, that know, that learn, uh, that have understood all that? Uh, what are we? How can we think about that? And my own take is that we're part of this nature. And uh, personally, um, emotionally, I find this immensely reassuring and uh, calming. I'm, I'm home. I'm not in the natural world as an outsider. I'm in the natural world uh, as part of it. I I'm admire home. your serenity, but I personally, after living through the six uh, chap prior chapters, I'm agitated because I want to know what it, what it all means. You are very calm to be, um, to be uh, subsumed in this very natural world and enjoy that, but uh, uh, people are different. And, and I, people are different. I'm agitated. I was calm before I heard your six chapters. <laughs> now, now I'm very I'm agitated. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I better talk to a tree. I, 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 you can talk to a tree. <laughs> I, um, it makes me more quiet by thinking that there are things I don't know. I have a partial understanding of reality, and that's it. I'm limited, I'm mortal. I think I'm gonna die, and that's it. And this is an incredibly reassuring thing for me. I don't have to worry about eternity. That's horrendously worry about eternity. The, worst, the last thing I would like to do is to live forever in some sense. Oh my God, I mean, life is hard enough for this 60 or 80 or 100 years, whatever, 
Thanks God, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, it's short, it's full of value, it's marvelous. We have these fantastic things, we can talk, we have emotions. That's the beauty and complexity of our life.